Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com and my YouTube is Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic Cognitive Neurology Part 4 Temporal Lobe. We are going to talk about a very interesting topic Cognitive Neurology Part 4 Temporal Lobe. The sylvian fissure separates the superior and lateral surfaces of the temporal lobe from the frontal lobe and from the anterior part of the parietal lobe. The temporal lobe merges posteriorly with the occipital lobe and superior laterally with the parietal lobe. The inferior branch of the middle cerebral artery supplies blood to the convexity of the temporal lobe and the temporal branch of the posterior cerebral artery supplies the medial and the inferior aspects including the hippocampus. So this is the temporal lobe you can see here. It has got the superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus. It is underneath the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe and posterior to it is the occipital lobe. Yeah. What are the clinical effects of temporal lobe lesions? The special senses visual, auditory, olfactory and gustatory. The language, especially the vernix area memory and time perception, emotion and behavior. Temporal lobe. The temporal lobe includes the superior, middle and inferior temporal, fusiform and hippocampal convolutions and on its superior surface, the transverse gyri of vessel which constitutes the auditory receptive area. Hearing is represented bilaterally so that the hessel gyri of both temporal lobes need to be affected to cause cortical deafness. The hippocampal convolutions is of critical importance in learning and memory. Hippocampus convolutions is of critical importance in learning and memory. Unlike the six layered neocortex, the hippocampus and the dentate gyrus are typical of the phylogenetically older three layered allocortex. Amygdala is important for the memory of fear. Amygdala is important for the memory of fear. In fact, it has been beautifully demonstrated, elegantly shown by Kluwer and Juicy known as the Kluwer and Juicy syndrome. They removed the amygdala from the monkeys. Monkeys are generally antagonistic or uh, they and snakes are enemies but when they remove the amygdala they lost the memory of fear they become very friendly towards snakes they started playing with snakes and the monkeys took the snakes and put it over their necks and started playing this shows this goes to show that the memory of fear lies in amygdala and removal of amygdala removes the memory of fear Actually, when we are in gatherings and talk to people, we talk externally. But when we are alone and when we are preoccupied, there is a constant inner stream of talk, constant thinking. It is also thought to be in temporal lobe. There is a constant thinking and inner stream of talk going on when we are alone or when we are preoccupied. And this is also thought to be in temporal lobe. Clover Busey syndrome, as I have just mentioned, bilateral ablation of the temporal lobes. It causes individuals to put objects in their mouths and engage in inappropriate sexual behavior. Other symptoms include loss of normal fear. The monkeys became very friendly with the snakes and anger responses, memory loss because the hippocampus is removed. Visual agnosia, occipitotemporal connections are affected, so they have inability to visually recognize objects, seizures, distractibility and dementia. 
a lesion in the superior convolution of the dominant temporal lobe areas 41 and 42 result in a failure to understand the spoken word auditory verbal agnosia and is an important component of Wernicke's aphasia. So when a person speaks and the other person tries to understand, it goes first into the auditory apparatus, auditory apparatus and it goes to the area 41 and 42 which is known as Wernicke's area. It is responsible for understanding and comprehension of the spoken word. If the Wernicke's area gets affected, it results in Wernicke's aphasia. They don't understand but they keep on speaking fluently, a nonsense but fluent speech. And they cannot understand the spoken language, cortical word deafness. But the other forms of noise like, like a bell ringing or a water gushing out, they, they'll, they'll be able to understand. This is known as word deafness. So, Wernicke's aphasia, they have inability to understand, comprehend the spoken language. Temporal lobes include a large part of the limbic system which subserves the emotional and motivational aspects of the behavior and vegetative functions. The emotions are in the limbic system. The limbic system are part of the temporal lobes. So, if the limbic system gets affected, the emotional aspects of the behavior get affected. When diseased, it may cause delirium, confusion states and even psychosis. The lower fibers of the geniculocalcarine pathway from the inferior retina swing in a wide arc over the temporal horn of the ventricle en route to the occipital lobes and lesions that interpret, interrupt them produce a contralateral upper homonymous quadrantonopia. We have the visual fibers, the visual pathway coming from the retina going to the lateral geniculate body from thence to the occipital lobe. From lateral geniculate body of thalamus the optic radiations either go in the parietal lobe superior part or in the temporal lobe inferior part. The representation is just the opposite. The nasal fibers represent temporal field, temporal fibers represent nasal field, superior fibers represent inferior field and inferior fibers represent superior vision. So when the temporal fibers optic radiations in the temporal lobe are affected, there is homonymous hemionopia but the superior part gets affected which is known as superior quadrantonopia. Music the non-dominant hemisphere is important for the recognition of harmony and melody in the absence of words. But actually the naming of music score and all the semantic, the writing and the reading aspects of the music require the integrity of the dominant temporal and probably the frontal lobes as well. Vestibular disturbances in the superior and posterior part of the temporal lobe Posterior to the primary auditory cortex, there is an area that responds to vestibular stimulation by establishing one sense of verticality in relation to the environment. Autoscopy and out-of-body experiences. Cortical vestibular area may be associated with autoscopy, seeing oneself from an external perspective. And the associative but not identical out-of-body experience that has been reported by patients who have near-death episodes. Disturbances of time perception. In a temporal lobe seizure originating on either side, time may seem to stand still or to pass with great speed. The patient with Korsakoff amnestic state is unable to place events in their proper time relationships. So, persons with Korsakoff amnestic state, they are unable to place events in their proper time relationships. Presumably because of a failure of retentive memory, a function assignable to the medial temporal lobe. Disturbances of smell and taste. Seizure foci in the medial part of the temporal lobe, that is in the region of the uncus, often evoke olfactory hallucinations to do with the smell sometimes referred to as uncinate fit. Stimulation of the posterior insular area elicited a sensation of taste along with the disturbances of alimentary function. Occipitotemporal lesions causes prosopagnosia. We have two streams. One the ventral occipitotemporal stream. Second is the dorsal occipitoparietal stream. The occipitotemporal stream is concerned with what of visual process. 
the occipital parietal stream is concerned with wear of visual process so occipital temporal stream is concerned with what of visual processing what 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 type of face what object it is what of visual processing is done by occipital temporal connections and where of visual processing is done by occipital parietal connections if occipital parietal connections get affected where the integration of the center with the periphery of the vision is lost so temporal lobe occipital temporal lesions what of visual processing is affected example prosopagnosia inability to identify known faces occipital temporal lesions cause a deficit in what of visual processing they cannot identify objects example prosopagnosia an inability to identify known faces they cannot identify an individual face they may say a face as a face but they cannot identify an individual face but the way they walk the way they talk they may identify but they cannot identify individual face even of a close friend leave alone a close friend they cannot identify their own faces when they stand in front of the mirror so what of visual processes affected occipital temporal lesions what we call as prosopagnosia the differences between the dominant and the non dominant temporal lobe in relationship to learning the dominant temporal lobe lesion causes an impairment in the learning of material presented through the auditory sense whereas the non dominant temporal lobe lesion causes an impairment in the learning of material presented through the visual sense disturbances of emotion and behavior the limbic system medial temporal lobe is intimately connected to emotion and behavior so emotion behavior and memory they are intimately connected and therefore we tend to remember memories which has got associated emotions to it for example a memory which has got an emotion to it for example a sad event a tragic event god forbid someone dies we tend to remember it better or a happy emotion you have cleared your say nd internal medicine and you become consultant uh, emotion is there to the memory you tend to remember it but a memory without emotion say routinely taking food or routinely getting up and 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 then doing the day to day activities they have no emotion so we tend to forget it so the limbic system the medial temporal lobe is intimately connected to emotion and behavior so memories which have got emotion are better remembered so summarizing the temporal lobe functions both the dominant and the non dominant first let's summarize the functions of the temporal lobe dominant the actions or functions and the effects of damage in terms of cognitive behavioral associated physical signs or positive phenomenon the functions of the action it is concerned with auditory perception the language verbal memory smell and balance the effects of damage in terms of cognitive behavioral effects are receptive aphasia dyslexia impaired verbal memory effects of damage in terms of associated physical signs they have contralateral homonymous but superior quadrantonopia the positive phenomena they have complex hallucinations smell sound vision and memory summary of the temporal lobe non dominant the functions are auditory perception melody pitch perception non verbal memory smell and balance effects of damage in terms of cognitive and behavioral functions are impaired non verbal memory impaired musical skills tonal perception the associated physical signs are homonymous hemianopia contralateral but superior quadrantonopia and the positive phenomenon are complex hallucinations smell sound vision and memory so these are all the important concepts of the temporal lobe functions almost all the important concepts of neurology i put it in a question and answer format in a book focus neurology written by me dr s srinivas it is available online from all the leading booksellers including amazon it could be bought online if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts or email uh, sriklpm@gmail.com but please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my web page dr srinivas concepts thank you bye